Good morning guys, good morning folks, uh, my name is EJ and I am here with another narrated art time-lapse video for us to, you know, take a look at, dissect, inspect, <laughs> and whatnot. Um, so yeah, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my artwork that I did for conceptart.org. Um, yeah, I did so much work for conceptart.org. It's kind of sad that it's not around anymore. Um, but this was for the daily sketch group or the daily uh daily sketch uh forum and the prompt for that day was marauders mar marauders i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right <laughs> i'm not sure marauders uh moonlit lounge and marauders from my understanding of what marauders are they're basically like pirates you know so w when i first read the prompt that's kind of like what I had in mind kind of like a you know and a place where marauders and pirates could go hang out and drink or something so it's like a dive bar and you're kind of like half expecting Han Solo to like show up and shoot everyone down or something I mean I don't know but that was like initially my first impression when I when I read the prompt but for some odd reason, when I started doing my sketch, out of nowhere, this image of a classy bar kind of came in my head. And what I have in mind was basically, you know, this bar has a, it's like open, right? Like, a, like it's an outside, semi-outside type of bar lounge area. And right on the deck, you could pretty much see like the tropical setting outside. I, I meant for this to be a tropical setting. And basically, you'll see the full moon, all bright and shiny and casting kind of like this uh, backlit scene or backlit characters, basically. Um, so yeah, what initially was going to be like this, you know action oriented image in my head all of a sudden out of nowhere became this romance kind of image where you know there's these two lovers basically in front of the moon they're backlit and they're inside the marauders lounge which is a high class bar so that's kind of basically what ended up happening with the illustration where i went with it so now that I've explained where my idea came from, let's talk about what has been going on for the past three minutes. So the past three minutes, after I got the idea of what to do, I basically did this loose sketch. As you can see, I just finished with the loose sketch and then right after that, I pretty much just took the random mech brush, um, set it to different hues and kind of just put a bunch of colors in my scene just to have some form of color to start out with. Um, if you're familiar with my workflow, I pretty much just throw colors in there at the very beginning without much thought, uh, without thinking too much about it. And then in the end, I kind of just smudge everything around into like recognizable shapes. And then I'll work with those to kind of, you know, detail those things out. So that's basically how I operate. Um, and so this is what I'm doing right now. I'm basically just put the colors in and um, I don't know why I did that color dodge. I, I'm not really sure what my rationale for putting that color dodge in. But I guess I wanted the moon to be a little bit brighter. So I went through uh, and did some color dodge on it. Um, but yeah, early on, I kind of already had it in my mind to set this scene as like a two-tone color of some sorts, you know? Uh, everything in the foreground's warm, and then obviously the outside scene is going to be cool. And so that's the reason why you see this, you know, uh, cool color hues uh, outside in the scene where the moon is and all the tropical area is. And everything else is kind of reddish and orange. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, um, now I'm basically just 
Um, what did I just do? Oh, okay. So what I did was I darkened my sketch layer by multiplying it, or not multiplying it, but uh, duplicating it a few times and then merging all the sketch layers in. Uh, I do this to get a really good black outline uh, so that I could kind of figure out where things kind of go. Um, I made a mistake of making it too dark though, because in the end uh, I'm gonna smudge even the outline in together with everything else and you'll see that it got too dark, especially in the bar area. And I really wish that I had at least turned down the opacity of that sketch layer before merging it in so that it won't be as black. But obviously I made it dark just so that I could kind of figure out where things are going to be. and. I'm putting in some neon green um, lights on the bar area because um, I kind of thought <laughs> it would look cool but in all honesty it really doesn't. I mean it kind of kills the two-tone scene you know like it, I should have just muted the whole bar area in all honesty. And in all honesty actually I, I could even crop this whole image to just the two characters in the front and it would work just as well. Um, I didn't really need to put the bar in there, but again, as I've mentioned, since the prompt was Marauders Moonlit Lounge, you know, I figured I kind of just need to put it in there. So yeah, but yeah, now I'm basically just doing my value check, making sure that um, everything reads correctly value-wise. Uh, I know that I kind of went back with some multiply layer just to kind of darken some spots out. And now I'm doing a color dodge. Um, layer or I'm putting something in a color dodge layer and um, what I typically do uh, right around this time is or when I do the multiply layer or when I do the color dodge layer I always just use, use blue and orange I'm not sure why I don't deviate from it that much I mean I really need to but those are my favorite colors to use when I'm trying to multiply or color dodge. So I would color dodge orange and I would use blue to multiply. And so that's what those past two layers are. I put a multiply layer and put some blue in it and I put a color dodge layer and put some orange in it. Uh, just to brighten and darken some scenes out. So yeah. And then now I'm grabbing some photos to kind of just overlay some texture onto the photo just to add some more noise because uh, eventually after I do this part I'm gonna just smudge everything down again uh, or I'm gonna put everything merge everything down into one layer again and then start doing my whole smudging thing so yeah I'm doing this photo bash just to get some few textures some few textured look into the painting
so now I just basically merge everything into one layer and I'm smudging everything into recognizable shapes again um, which is pretty much uh, what I use as a base paint or my base layer to kind of draw everything else from or to draw on top of uh, so yeah and so yeah I'm just smudging everything down blending everything um, most speed painters don't even really bother with this part you know because blending kind of makes it look more uh, more worked on rather than you know most speed painters typically try to save uh, the textures they don't typically destroy textures or the textures that's created by the brush stroke or in this case a photo bash but I on the other hand really like the blended look and so that's why I take the time to do this um, I try to do this real fast you know I try not to think too much about about it um, uh, I don't know how much, how long I spent on this one. I think I might have just spent like 15 to 20 minutes just smudging everything out. But there are times, uh, especially on very detailed um, detailed pieces, I, I would end up smudging for about an hour. Um, but I know I didn't spend an hour smudging all this or blending all of the colors in. So yeah. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much just what I'm doing right now. Just kind of just going through the scene, uh, section by section. I started with the floor. I tried to smudge it to make it look like they're planks. And then now I'm obviously working in the background, um, the tropical area, the tropical setting. Um, and yeah, I'm smudging the trees. In all honesty, I really don't like the coconut trees the way I painted it. I, I should have been a little more realistic with it. Um, but yeah, uh, it's supposed to be a speed paint, so I wanted to do this fast and quick. Okay, so I'm done with the smudging part and then I've somewhat started uh, detailing. No, I take that back. I'm actually still using the blending brush, the textured blend brush. I look like I was doing some strokes, but now I'm back to the smudging thing. <laughs> I take it back. Okay, so I'm smudging the bar area and you can see some of the black in there is just too black. Um, I think I edited my final image to make it not look as black, but then at this time when I was working in this piece, that that is just way too dark. Um, so yeah, it's it's coming out as too black. Then I did a color dodge on the moon to kind of brighten it up, um, make it look like the numero uno light source, you can say, uh, in the scene. Um, and then I'm also color dodging uh, the background, um, the background sky, so that it appears to be a wee bit brighter than it should be. Uh, I think at some point in time I did the top part too. I don't know why I just did just the bottom, because that top part is kind of looking too dark. Um, so yeah. Um, Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
that that sky honestly feels like it's too dark. I don't I can't remember for the life of me if I went back through it or not. Uh, but at least the moon looks good. So we'll we'll just keep watching the video and see what else happens. But yeah, so obviously I'm still working in the background. Uh, I'm marking out the edges, delineating my edges. Um, I'm not really adding any highlights or shadows because it's kind of like the background area. So I guess I'm leaving that as is. Um, okay, so there it is. I actually painted it. I didn't color dodge. So I brightened the background by actually painting uh, a lighter color instead of what I thought was going to happen, which I, I thought I color dodged it, but apparently I didn't. I'm, you know, just painting it regularly, like good old fashioned painting. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so I added a very light green tone on this guy, just to brighten it up a, a bit. I can't brighten it too much, obviously, because it is a night scene. So obviously the brightest part really needs to be the moon and not the sky. But I do know that at some point in time I did lighten it, so which obviously we're just now watching. And then I'm painting around the trees, which, uh, man, I wish I had fixed those coconut trees because they look just wonky. So yeah, maybe in the future I will develop this piece some more because I actually do like this scene and I do like this speed paint. So yeah, maybe sometime in the future I'll redo this whole thing, this whole theme and see if I could get something else better. Um, but yeah, as a critique of this piece that I just did, it's those trees just do not look good. It could be so much better. I could have even used textures uh, or like photo bash some coconut trees and those would look way better than what I did. But yeah, I mean, it's a speed paint. It works, you know, because I'm just trying to get the idea down. It's a sketch and I didn't really need to be a perfectionist about it. So yeah. And then if I'm not wrong, I'm going to lasso parts of the top out so I could um, mark some edges, the edge of the ceiling, which is what I'm doing right now. There you go. I lasso that in and then I paint, I painted the sky so that the edges are sharper. I honestly need to do this more on my speed paints, lassoing things out, because they make such nice crisp edges when you lasso things out. Um, but I'm really not in the habit of, of doing that. There's a lot of great artists like uh, Ate Gailin, I think that's how you pronounce his name, or Jordan Grimmer. Uh, they're lasso artists. So does Ingram Shell, I think. I think I've never really seen his process. I, if I'm not wrong, I think he does do the lassos too. Um, but yeah, those artists uh, are really good speed painters and they really do the whole lasso painting thing to great effect. Dominic Mayer does that too, I actually come to think of it. But yeah, for the ones just starting to know, basically you just kind of lasso some parts out just to isolate it. And um, when you paint with a lasso tool, your edges get really crisp. It almost looks like superficial. Um, there's another artist that I'm thinking of. Um, for the life of me, I can't. Michael Sawitruck? Saw Sawitruck? Saw I'm so sorry, I'm butchering the name. And I don't even think that's the right name. But I'll, I'll just write all their names down in, in the description. But um, I've seen his videos and in his videos, he definitely does the whole lasso thing. And what it does is that the edges are so crisp, it almost looks like a photograph instead of a painting. So is there a nice cool technique that I don't do often enough that I don't explore? Um, I guess I really like my blended look. So I guess that's just like a preference thing. So. But I'm not opposed to exploring it though. I think it would be cool to explore it.
Okay, so we're about to start on my favorite part. Um, so yeah, I'm about to detail the two characters. Um, and I really like how I did this part of the painting. I mean, this is the reason why I love this painting was because of these two characters. And again, like I mentioned, I could probably just crop the whole painting into that setting, like what we're looking at right now, where those two characters are so close up. Like if I just crop that whole image to just that, I think it would look so awesome. Um, but yeah, I decided to leave the bar out, obviously for for the prompt, you know, so that the prompt would so they would go along with the prompt what I drew. But um, yeah, going back with these characters, I didn't really know how they were gonna pose. Like I when when I'm putting in all these marks, this is just like gung ho, super brave, <laughs> no clue as to what their posts are. You know, it just kind of just slowly came in my head. The guy's fairly easy to figure out, like how he was gonna be standing. Um, but it's the girl from what I remember um, like I wasn't really sure how she was standing from what I remember and I think when I added her arms uh, crossed in the back I think that's when I was like wow yeah that was a really really cool pose that I did so yeah um, and I love the fact too that I, I made them like a uh, wearing like uh what's the word for it like fancy party clothes you know like the guys in some form of a tuxedo or something and the, the girls in a nightgown which i didn't really plan for it to be that way but it just kind of ended up that way so yeah and this is part of the reason why i like speed paint you know uh, i think i mentioned how sometimes my speed paints i'm just like ew you know <laughs> why did i draw that but then there's times when i do my speed paint and some things just you know develop that just looks so cool that i did not expect for it to look cool yeah this is one of those instances you know because i i wasn't really actively thinking of how things were going to be i was just kind of just going with the flow and then when everything kind of came together i was like yeah that's that's like super cool so yeah the head of the guy is really big he <laughs> he looks like a a little boy right at this point in time but i did go back and shrunk his head because i remember thinking that it was it was too big so yeah and of course i'm checking at it from afar uh this is always a good check to do every now and then you know look at it from afar because what kind of give you a totally different perspective of how things are looking like and then I decided to go ahead and get rid of the plank looking effect because it just it just wasn't working at that point. So yeah, you just smudge it all out. And looking back at this now, I just realized that those shadows is way too wrong. The shadows that they're casting should be moving to the left, not to the right. I just now realized that. So yeah, that's a mistake. <laughs> Wow, that's interesting. I just now noticed that. Wow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's too funny. But here's a girl now. My favorite, favorite pose. The guy was in alright pose, but this girl, when I finally recognized how her arms were going to be, that was when it all came together, you know? Because it looks like she's, she's opening herself up in a way. She's like really making herself vulnerable, you know? It's like her got she got her arms back she's like leaning in close to the guy and it's like yeah it's this kind of like nice sweet romantic moment going on you know it's like their first date they're getting to know each other kind of deal and the girl's really digging the guy so she's like hold me hold me please or something i, I don't know <laughs> i'm making this up but yeah um I really dig that pose. I, I really love that pose. It all came out came out so nicely. But yeah, that is my absolute favorite part of the whole painting. 
Everything else is alright. <laughs> the trees are... Oh, <laughs> we can do without those trees. <laughs> yeah, the bar was kind of like... Ooh. But those characters, yeah, they look good. And there you go, I shrunk the guy's head down because I knew he was too big. I gotta make him look like a man instead of a boy. So yeah. And then after this, I pretty much start working on, on the bar. And, and just like I mentioned, the neon green didn't really do a whole lot in this scene. In, in fact, I kind of feel like it's too off, you know? Because you kind of had like the blue slash purple going very well with orange. Because blue and orange kind of goes very well. But green and orange doesn't typically make a good combo, you know? So... Um, that could have been something else. Or I could have just used the cyan again uh, as a highlight on the bar area. But obviously I yeah, stuck with the green. But yeah, I mean the bar was just pretty much my standard way of, you know, detailing. I kind of just delineate the edges um, and then add some highlights. And in this case, since a lot of the bar area was too dark, I didn't even really need to add shadows and in fact I, from what I remember I just pretty much just did highlights and outlines and that's pretty much all I did so yeah Just pretty much took gray, put a few shapes in, and then kind of just went back with some bright highlights. I color picked it from the green uh, light and just kind of just did some outlines just to indicate some bottles. And I pretty much repeated that process all throughout the bar area. Okay, so I did fix the shadows. So, okay. I didn't. I didn't remember if I fixed the shadows or not. Turns out I did. Look at that. Now the shadows are, you know, <laughs> shaped correctly <laughs> instead of the way it was before. It looked really odd going to the right. It just, yeah, it looked really odd. It's always fun watching these paintings. The funny part is that I, I watched this video in a much faster motion than, than what it is now, right? I watched this video earlier in much faster motion just to kind of quickly write down some notes. The whole video is like 34 minutes but I, when I watched it I it was like 10 minutes or something you know it was like super speeded up just to kind of remind me of notes. So when I finally play it the the way the speed should be playing it's always kind of funny because I, I miss some details from my first look at it you know. So it's always just interesting to look at these videos because, you know, I forget what happens, you know. I mean, this was done last year, actually, come to think of it. This was done a year ago. And so for me to just be looking back at it a year later, it's always kind of like interesting. 
because then there's all these ideas that pops in my head and I'm like, oh yeah, I could have done that better or I could have done this differently or I could have done that, etc, etc, and so on and so forth, you know. But yeah. But this piece is pretty much almost done. Uh, like I said, um, the last detailing that I did was at the bar area and it was just, it went by real quick I mean you could see me like use one color put a bunch of shapes in for bottles pick another color and then put a bunch of those shapes in um, and then I'm unifying the whole look by grabbing one highlighted or the light green that you can see on the top right and, um, I chose like a light green color and can I just use that to outline all the bottles? And uh, yeah, that pretty much serves as the bar area. The bartender came, or I drew the bartender pretty fast, pretty quick. I pretty much kind of knew what his post was, which I wanted him like cleaning some glass or something, looking down at what he's doing. So, and that's pretty much what ended up, what I ended up drawing. So yeah. And again, I'm checking on it from afar, you know, just making sure if everything reads correctly, the character reads correctly. Uh, they're very, very prominent in the photo. Um, and then the bar area is not so much, but I kind of wanted the bar area to be muted anyways, because they're not the highlight of the piece. So. So it's fine. But yeah, it'd be really interesting for me to go back uh, and redo this piece and reapproach this whole idea of a high class bar with these two lovers uh, in front of the moon. Uh, I think that would make for a cool painting. So yeah. And then I realized that this bartender is like way bigger than he need he needed to be. Uh, in comparison to the two characters, uh, to the two main characters, so eventually I had to shrunk him down, uh, re-edit him and shrunk him down. But yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too difficult of an edit. And that's it for this image folks. Thank you guys for watching it with me. Uh, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.